The former head of World Athletics, Lamine Diak, has been found guilty of corruption and money laundering by a court in Paris and sentenced to two years in jail. He led the International Amateur Athletics Federation between 1999 and 2015 and was accused of extorting millions of euros from competitors so that they could avoid sanctions for failing drug tests. Diak, who's 87, has always denied any knowledge of payoffs. Well, a short while ago, I spoke to Declan Hill. He's an associate professor of investigations at the University of New Haven in the United States. He told me it's difficult to overstate the impact of this case on the world of athletics. I was speaking to one sports official that said, we really have to reconsider 16 years of Olympic championship, world championships in almost all track and field events, because this fellow was the fellow who ran it all. And he's now been convicted of taking bribes to suppress doping of really senior athletes. So if you're a clean athlete anywhere in the world who competed during those 16 years when he was in charge, you can be looking at yourself in the mirror and going, was I cheated? Was I corrupted? Okay. Well, so many major events that took place during his reign. But does this taint, you know, already athletics was already coping or trying to cope with the fallout from the, uh, the Olympics where Russia was implicated? How much of a saying is yes, this going to look, have across is, the board? This, this is simply one part, Tokes, of that, of that particular sordid tale where thanks to the Stepanovs, you know, these two Russian, very courageous Russian whistleblowers, it was revealed that there was a systematic state-sponsored doping that kind of affected everything in Russia. But this trial boosts that up to a completely other level. This is the Sepp Blatter. This is the head of FIFA for track and field being convicted in a French court of accepting millions of dollars in bribes. And some of the details in the trial are extraordinary. You know, uh, envelopes full of cash, secret offshore bank accounts. His son is still in hiding in Senegal. He's refusing to leave the country or um, you know, accept an international arrest warrant. So it's really like a John le Carre meets the Godfather meets Chariots of Fire. You're going to make a Hollywood movie out of this one.